We are live. We are live on the Prevail Over Cancer podcast with Keith Bishop, my partner in crime. I say this every time. Um, Keith Fine. is a oh, good crime. Good crime. <laughs> Keith is a bundle of knowledge. And every time I talk to him, I seem to learn more. Every time I hear one of his posts, I read one of his blogs. It's just, it just an encyclopedia when it comes to cancer prevention uh, and so much, so much knowledge. So I'm so excited to be talking about a topic today that I absolutely love, something I've been doing for a while, but I really increased it uh, last November when I was diagnosed with cancer. It is the use of a sauna to the point yeah. where I've actually put one in my house and I use it on a regular basis and my family uses it on a regular basis. So this is something that I know you use. Let's yes. let's dive right into it. Saunas, the benefits. And one thing we were talking about prior to coming on our podcast is there's not direct, direct studies of sauna in cancer, but when you look at all the benefits of a sauna, they directly right. correlate with the benefits of cancer prevention. So let's dive into that. What's your use of sauna? How much times a week do you use it? And then and then I'll talk about what I use and then we'll talk about the benefits of it. So I use it three, at least three times a week okay. and up, up to five times a week. But it's also, you know, and I, I will do an extreme sauna and meaning, uh, you know, I get my core temperature up, sweating, heart rates up. It's like exercise yeah. and it is exercise. Our heart rate's going to be high and, and I view and, and like to rotate it, meaning I view it kind of like exercise. I don't want to keep doing exactly the same exercise every day. You know, you've got, let, you've got to let that muscle recover and grow and repair. And then, you know, we're going to talk about heat shock proteins. And, yep. and there's some theories that the heat shock protein effect may last, a, you know, three to five days. And so if you. Interesting. Interesting. Because I read, I read you're looking at a 12 to 24 hour period. So three to five days is a big it, jump. It, it depends on, it depends on the heat shock protein. So the HSP and then there's. There's a hundred of them. I mean, there's a 25, 27, 93. Interesting. And there are many different ones, you know, that are expressed, but some of them, and actually also a, like a neurologic effect, you know, that uh, I, I know a psychiatrist that uses this and, and it's like a, about a five day, you know, type effect, you know, on, on depression and anxiety and ruminating thoughts. And Let, let's, there's two things I want to dive into quickly. There's one. I wanted to get back into that because when I do the sauna, my mindset with the sauna is um, I'm getting in there. I'm just going to just shock my body uh, there. I mean, besides the physical part, there's a mental part. You're putting yourself yes. through something hard. And yes. if you do something hard on a regular basis, it's going to make everything else in life a little easier. So that's just a little mental mindset on the side. Definitely. But I do it five days a week. Um, sometimes, to be honest, six, I go in there and I, do extreme. I, I go in there and I come out where I look like it just came out of the shower. And I do that. I do about 15 minutes. I set it around 190 and I just get in there. I And a part of it, and we're going to talk about later on this podcast, is I do my lymphatic massages in there as well, which actually helps stimulate the sweat, stimulate your body. So you're really picking up a good sweat. So I do right. about 15 minutes. I set it, set the timer, go in and out, and I do it five to six days a week. I've never looked at it in the mindset of working out where it's um, one day less, one day more. Explain more about that. Why you do that? Yes. Well, and so it's um, well, actually, I do experiments on myself. Okay. And so, um, I found my cortisol levels were higher, and so uh, so I Interesting. do. And so I do. Uh, that means stress. Yes. Okay. And so my uh, cortisol or, or our cortisol is high yeah. in the morning that, that wakes us up. We yes. don't have to have coffee alarm and just, we start waking up automatically and then it drops off. Well, so I wake up in the morning, cortisol is high. And then, um, I do, you know, if I do an extreme exercise or if I do a, extreme sauna, my cortisol is higher for a longer period of time. Interesting. Elevated cortisol can raise blood glucose. And so, so therefore, matter of fact, uh, I did it for one month and I tested my glucose levels and actually my glucose levels were a, a little bit higher. My triglycerides, which are a lipid cholesterol number, yeah, yeah. were actually were higher. And so interesting. Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so I know. So it's kind of like, 
you know, we have to decide you know, on that. So that's where I cut down from five days a week to three days a week. And then I'll test again to see what happens with those numbers. So, but I was also, I was doing an extreme sauna. As a matter of fact, I was, I monitor my oral temperature, try to make sure I'm getting my core body temperature up and, and then a cold shower. And, and then at, before lunch, I was exercising again. And so, you know, there's a possibility, you know, that, you know, well, we, I think we have to be careful about the quantity, you know, and, 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 and frequency about it. So a minimum, you know, three days a week, you know, on that. So matter of fact, there's an interesting Finnish study and um, that I, I just love. I'll send it to you if you want yeah, yeah. and we can post it. But, um, and so in, first of all, in Finland, the average lifespan is actually increasing. So they are going and up. And anywhere average. in Scandinavia, they love their saunas. Exactly. And so that, and, and so their, their average lifespan now is 82 and, and it's, it's slightly increasing in the United States. The lifespan is down yeah. 70, 76 or something like that. I, last time I heard it was 74. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it depends on, it depends on sex and, and, yeah, yeah. and yes, that's a major, I mean, so things are getting worse, you know, in North America, so in the United States. So um, in Finland, you know, they do this sauna, well, anywhere from one to four times a week. And now sometimes some of some people can do it more often, but it's just part of the routine, part of their daily habits, part of their exercise, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's just part, it's just a normal thing for them to do. And um, so, uh, and they seem to have this uh, research is showing some concerns and, and benefits about uh, like Alzheimer's and dementia and cardiovascular disease. Um, and matter of fact, you know, the whole body is impacted by circulation and that's what we're doing with, with the sauna. We're opening up these blood vessels and everything can get better. There's two things I want to talk about there. One, I've been doing, like I said, five days a week. I mean, I, I even sometimes six, that's my extreme and I'm, and I go extreme. I go 15 minutes and I come out like I'm drenched. I just did my annual physical. So it's been a pretty much a one year period since I really incorporated the sauna into my life and my cholesterol, my sugar levels are the lowest they've been in 25 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm seeing the benefits, whether it's that through, or is it such a drain change in my diet? There's, there's a lot of factors that I've changed right. my lifestyle. Right. So, but that is one thing I've noticed. And everything too, is I do my sauna, um, since I brought it into my, my home, I do my sauna about an hour before I go to bed. Um, mm -hmm. I was doing, okay. we're, we'll talk about this on another topic, but I was doing a um, uh, grounding station and then I do mm -hmm. a relay therapy for a couple of minutes and then I would jump in the sauna and then I would uh, take a shower, have a nice uh, dandelion tea and about half an hour later, head off to bed. And okay. I, it, it's interesting you're saying it increases your cortisone levels because I sleep way better when I do it in my sauna at night. I feel like I'm just, my body is just in such a relaxation. Mind you, I do put on uh, a high frequency, a 432 frequency sound. And there's a lot of other things I do. I do oh, a yeah. lot of, bre I do breathing techniques and it's on it just to bring my heart rate down. So I do other things that are probably going to be more beneficial to the relaxation part plus the tea after, but I find I sleep better and you're interesting. You're saying it brings up your cortisone levels. So if anything, I should be more hyper at that point. Yeah. Well, and I may be pushing it further than you are. Interesting. And so, you know, heart rate, you know, 130, 140, yeah. uh, you know, oral temperature up to 101. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I, and so then that could be part of it. So stress, matter of fact, I see that we do saliva cortisol tests. Yeah. And early morning, like kind of like before breakfast time, before lunch, before dinner, before bedtime. And I've actually, um, a matter of fact, one of our pharmacists, you know, uh, was exercising and their uh, cortisol level was bumped, you know, at night because they, after work, they had gone by and, and did their exercise and their cortisol level was high. Interesting. You know, at night and the rest of the time it was normal. So it can, it depends on the person and the extreme, you know, that you do. And so once again, I may have been doing it a little bit too much. As a matter of fact, my wife is not happy. <laughs> so she, she says, you know, it's not good for you. You, 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 you're too red. You're too hot. 
And of course, yeah. he's trying to take care of me. And, and uh, uh, but I said, I'm fine. So matter of fact, my body adapts. You know, I'm able to do longer and tolerate it better and 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 such like that. So, you know, uh, and so once again, I, you know, so the question is, well, you have to do it enough, you know, a minimum, you know, three times a week. Yeah. You know, and, you know, even five times a week, you know, five, there we go, five times a week allows for some interruptions and some travel, you know, type things. Yeah. And so the, uh, so the the more you can do it, the better. But once again, I I'm probably pushing a little bit higher on a temperature. Yeah. And I do experiments. So because I, you know, and I have access to the tests and the tools and things like that. So, you know, monitor my pulse ox and my my heart rate and and I have a history of AFib. So I want to be careful about that. So yeah. I'm, I'm monitoring my heart rate just to kind of make sure that's not happening. And so far that hasn't. Uh, although it's important to <laughs> that's you know, that's a that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, yes. And so, you, and so it's important. You, know, you have to get your doctor's approval, healthcare provider's approval, make sure you're healthy enough because this is like exercise, you know, same type of concerns and, you know, heart rate will increase and, um, and then you have to rehydrate and get your minerals because you are sweating. You know, I mean, it is major and, you know, uh, I mean, towels soaking, drenching wet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's break down uh, a couple of the benefits, and one thing we talked about at the beginning is HSP, which is your hot, uh, your heat, heat, uh, heat stock, stock protein. proteins, uh -huh. and what that does essentially is um, it kind of what I read it reorganizes and kind of stabilizes the matter in the cells, and in turn, it's going to help you recover faster. It's going to help um, your if you have an illness, which is you could correlate that to cancer. It's going to help your cells recover faster. Um, anything else of the benefit of the HSP? Yes. Well, HSP, if we can, uh, you know, impact that, it uh, we, it makes it so the cells, cancer cells, are more susceptible to treatments Interesting. like chemotherapy and radiation and immune therapy. So, you know, that's another benefit of, of a sauna is it increases uh, lymphocytes to help fight infections. And that's part of the goal of chemotherapy, radiation, immune therapy, our body is to damage those cancer cells and, the, and then the immune system's got to get rid of that. So that's part of what this does. It, it's kind of like another modality. You know, there's intermittent fasting and, yeah. and, and that we talked about and, um, and, you know, limiting carbs and, and certain proteins. And, and, and this is just another way to physically even kind of damage the cells to a certain extent. And and then that makes it more susceptible to that other treatment modality, whatever or, that may be. Yeah, or or your body, if your body's strong enough to actually naturally kill those cells off if you're treating right. doing everything right on purpose. So another thing with the benefits is it increases uh, there's been studies to show that increases the um the volume of your white blood cells after a good mm -hmm. sauna session. Let's talk about a little about that, the benefits of that as well. Yeah. So the white blood cells uh, are those are the cells that fight in. Well, fight infections, Infection, yeah, yeah, you know, whether whatever kind of infection that is, bacterial, virus, fungal, whatever. Uh, but that that also that enlarged cell means that it's activated, and it's more ready to use uh, to to do its job. So same thing with even platelets. You know, when I see a, a platelet size large, I'm actually a little bit more concerned because that's a clotting factor yes. in a blood. So if that's big, then I'm going, uh oh, you know, something might be getting ready to happen. Uh, but the white blood cells, when they're bigger, they're going to do better to, you know, uh, to attach. And, and they literally attach and gobble up and eat away, you know, and, and take that stuff to the spleen to help get rid of this garbage. You know, and, and that's where it comes into uh, autophagy, you know, and, and the body cleaning up the system. So, so sauna and intermittent fasting are two of those just like great ways to do that. What about um, another thing? And then I want to kind of put them all together. But another thing I read was um, it actually helps in a way upgrade your uh, mitochondria. Do you understand anything about that? You talk a little bit about that. And then I want to kind of organize it in a way where, because if you look at the the um, heat shock proteins, they're kind of separating the matter and separating the good and the bad. And then the white cells are going to increase with the sauna and they're going to start killing those. It, it all kind of correlates and works together to help right with 
cancer prevention and also help fight it off if you are going to you are going like you said through a treatment or something like that. But let's mm -hmm. talk about your uh, mitochondria and, and and how it helps we kind of reorganize it all. Yeah, so the the mitochondria it you know, is the energy storehouse inside the cells. It yes. makes our energy chemicals and ATP and the the sauna, you know, in the heat is like exercise. Yeah. It's to increase your heart rate and and when we increase our heart rate um it, it's going to increase the metabolism you know throughout the body so matter of fact you know you're having to physically work and matter of fact you're actually you're breathing harder and matter yeah. of fact you know, concentrate on breathing even that's part of the part of what we should be doing um but we're exercising in doing that and so mitochondria uh, are, are interesting we actually inherit those from mom and so we have an energy tendency to come from our mother. Interesting. And and so actually they go back and they actually look at uh, the mitochondria DNA to trace lineage back, genetic lineage back to you know wherever thousands of years. So, but that D but that mitochondria, when it's stressed, the number of mitochondria in the body can actually double inside the cells, rather. Okay. So when we exercise and and do sauna would be like an exercise, we can dub up to double the number of mitochondria in our cells. That means more energy. Yes. And the mitochondria uh, is kind of like a, a, a muscle. The more it works, the better and bigger it gets. Well, the mitochondria can actually up to triple the amount of energy that they can produce. Which, make, which makes them stronger to kill off the bad ones. Exactly. Yes. And, and, you, what, and the mitochondria are, oh, let's see, what is the only cell that doesn't have mitochondria? Maybe red blood cells? Yeah. I'm not sure about that, that statement, but it seems like there's a, that may be the only cell that doesn't have a mitochondria in it. But all other cells have mitochondria, and so uh, which is energy production. So we have to have that. And the whole deal is actually just to make you, you know, with more energy so that it just everything's better, you know, yeah, and it's yeah. about exercise. It's kind of, it's, it's very similar to exercise. I keep saying that I know, but you know, how many of us will spend 30 minutes exercising, you know, and, and most people aren't doing that. You're doing that. I'm doing that, but most people aren't exercising on a regular basis. And I just put it as a, just another way to exercise. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, I, I, I mean, away from cancer, I had read a study. This is probably going on Oh, maybe a year, year and a half ago, I remember reading a study and it's, and it was out at a Scandinavia as well. I can't remember which country in the Scandinavian countries. And it was stating that, uh, four times a week for 20 minutes would increase or, or increase or de decrease your chances of heart attack or stroke or anything like that mm -hmm. by up to 60%. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and when I remember reading them, like, like, and they were like, if you have 20 minutes, four times a week, you're on and you're at a certain age as a male, you're better off just doing sauna four times a week than be honest, working out because you're going to get more benefits for your heart. So I remember reading that article and it always clicked in the back of my head and it always stuck there. So, um, there is so much benefits to the sauna. Yes, that's right. And, and, and part of that cardiovascular thing is, uh, well, it's also the heart is beating stronger. Yeah. And there's studies showing that the heart function, you know, can improve the amount of blood that it's pumping and then sucking back up uh, from your legs and extremities. And, and so it just, uh, the heart becomes stronger and better, less heart failure, reduced risk of heart attacks, you know, and I didn't see, and I can't remember about strokes, but I know some dementia, cause that's my other family history issues. So, you know, some issues about that, but matter of fact, you know, I expect as this becomes more popular that we'll see things even about the retina in the eyes and we'll see, you know, kidney function numbers improving. And uh, uh, I was going to talk about that. I mean, a huge yeah. part of your, your system working is obviously your kidneys and your liver functioning properly. Right. Mm -hmm. And there is studies showing that extreme heat, um, it's the, it's, it's almost exposure, the uh, prevision of how it kind of, helps detox your liver and your kidney, the extreme heat. So mm -hmm. do you have any science behind that? Yes. Well, actually, there's not much science behind it. Interesting. And so I, you know, going through the medical journals, I did a review just to make sure. And there's really, it's, it's hard to measure toxins. 
you know, the only way to measure toxins is, uh, is actually a fat sample. And the EPA, the EPA, the United States yeah, yeah. Animal Protection Agency, they've done that. They do fat samples and take that core, a needle, and pull out that and test it for PCBs and all those kind of things. And so the research on measuring toxins, is, I haven't seen that, but you know, that would be, I, I should look that up and see, you know, there might be some information on it. There, There is some studies, not much, but there is some studies, but I mean, it's, there is showing that the increase, like you said, the heat exposure to those those organs do help stimulate them and make them function more effectively. So if they are functioning more effectively, you're hoping that yeah. they're going to do a better job at what they do. And their job is to kind of relieve those toxins. So I guess that's where they're trying to push towards, right? Yes. And so, well, there is, there is some research about, actually, there is some mobilization of the toxins in the fat cells. Interesting. So, so that's where the, the infrared you know, uh, penetrates the skin at least one inch up to two inches. I was going to say up to two, probably. Yeah, if it's a good and one. So, and so that's going to be a lot of subcutaneous fat. Yeah. And toxins are stored in fat. And, and so that's going to help heat that up and mobilize that. And, and then also the blood supply. So we got toxins that are going to be released. And then it's, you know, going to be coming out through the skin. Matter of fact, you know, uh, and I've, I've got uh, a sauna here in my office and and um, I have to, you know, leave the door open you know, and wash those towels. And because you know, there's I mean, there's some odors involved, you know, <laughs> and so, you know, and, and from our body. Yeah. And, you know, by doing this, matter of fact, you know, um, I've had an associate or two that have mentioned that. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to, you know, and so, uh, you know um and and once again but that sauna can definitely mobilize that and those toxins um and and especially in the fat cells but then it's it's our responsibility we've got to you know get that stuff off of our body and support like your dandelion tea yeah. but support liver function to keep us from storing that again yeah yeah 100% 100%. So there's two more things and 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 one of them I'm going to translate into our uh, transition into our next section here is is the benefits is blood circulation and it helps improve your lymphatic system which we're going to kind of transition to our next topic here but um so blood circulation another benefit with a sauna extreme heat and in in improving your lymphatic system you want to just quickly talk about that and then we could kind of talk about the lymphatic system and what it and I'll tell you oh, sure. we'll talk about what it does and all that in the benefits yeah. So the, so yes, whenever like my wife, what my wife is concerned about is whenever I come out and she walks in and uh, check on me and, and I'm red. Yeah. And yes, the blood vessels dilated yes. and the, the capillaries dilated. And so I'm red and just like I've been outside in 105 degree temperature, weed eating, you know, for an hour, yeah. you know, and, and so I've got to rest. And so I, you know, you've got to rest from that. And uh, so but it's going to open up those blood vessels, you know, throughout the body, um, the, you know, and, and so we're going to increase the blood vessel, I mean, blood supply throughout the body to a certain extent, um, meaning, you know, we only have so much blood. And so if we dilate these blood vessels, you know, uh, on the skin and get red, then, you know, we actually, there's a study saying that, you know, that it may also decrease some of the blood supply, you know, to the core organs to a certain extent. And that's going to be one of the benefits about the cold shower. Yes. And so the cold shower is going to open up the blood vessels to the core, you know, to warm up the core um, and, and, you know, to forget about the extremities, it's kind of like a cold plunge. I did that with a doctor Saturday and, and so a cold plunge and was that, was that your first time? Uh, first time for a cold plunge. I've done cold shower, but first yes. time for a cold plunge. How, yeah. how was that? So, um, uh, it, uh, it was kind of like I expected. I've uh, also done mountain, uh, um, uh, mountain stream and, uh, but especially, um, oh, a waterfall shower. Yes before in water that is just above freezing yeah. and uh so i kind of knew what to expect but you know and but you know one thing that was probably the most interesting after the sauna you know and the cold plunge and and the psychiatrist says okay he just go ahead and stand over there for a few minutes you know and just kind of look at the yard actually it's winter time here there's no leaves on the trees yeah. or anything and then he got ended his for a few minutes and but while i was looking out 
and I'm almost blind, legally blind. I had my glasses. I put my glasses on, but I looked, and things were clear. Yeah. I mean, I could see fine details. Yeah, that's crazy, huh? Yeah, and like, you know, the buds on the trees that were 50 feet away, you know, and so my vision, you know, was better. And so, but that's what he's doing with that is actually that's part of his uh, treatment for a lot of his patients is, you know, heat, you know, and ice plunge, you know, to help them to, you know, think in a different way. And number one, oh, I did that. That was hard. You know, I'm, yeah. I can do something new. Yes. And that's part of his program too, is, is, uh, doing better and new things and improving your life. So, uh, but anyway, but that was very interesting. I've never quite noticed that before about how clear that was. Yeah. Yeah. So, been, uh, it, there's so many benefits to that. I mean, that was, that was something we'll talk about in another topic. Yeah. So let's, mm-hmm. let's dive into your lymphatic system. This is something where to be honest, I knew nothing about prior to not even being diagnosed with cancer. I learned more about it after surgery. It was um, uh, another gentleman uh, that had gone through a very similar situation. We've become really good friends since then. And he introduced me to it saying he was getting lymphatic massages. I was like, lymphatic massages? And and prior to my surgery with my surgeon, um, he, when I got cleaned out, they removed 65% of my rectum. He also went in and said, I'm going to just clean you right out. And he took out 23 lip notes. Oh. And that's when I learned about lip notes and all that stuff and, and, and how they, they work in your system. Uh, they control your body's pretty much, uh, fluid levels. They help with, um, fighting off infection. They're a big part of your immune system and, and how I learned more about it when I really started studying it, it was how they spread, how, how cancer spreads in your body. Um, when you do have a tumor, it's either when it starts spreading, it's either going to go into your bloodstream or it's going to go into your lymphatic system, which will usually get right into one of your lymph nodes and then start spreading through your lymph nodes. And that's how it becomes, it it starts spreading widely through your body. So learning about that was very important and understanding how they get blocked and, and drainage and all that stuff like that. So I really learned about lymphatic massages and that's actually part of takes me about three to five minutes and I do it in my sauna and there's, I, I did a video on it. There's six parts that I really focus on. I got this little wooden tool that I bought on Amazon. It works incredibly. It feels great behind the ears over my, my, uh, clavic bone here, my, under my armpits, my belly button, my groin and behind my knees. And those are the spots that I really focus on. It takes me, like I said, three, four minutes in the sauna. So you really don't think, and it actually helps increase uh, to me, I, I sweat more when I do it. I don't know if it's just getting my system working or not. So let's talk about the lymphatic system, the importance of it. And then I want to dive into um, how it increases or or the spread of cancer through it and all that stuff. Let's, so I want to get into some more information on that. So let's talk about the lymphatic system and, and your knowledge of it. Sure. So the lymphatic system is a, like you mentioned, kind of like a drainage system. Yeah. And, and so it's, um, um, it's, it's not affected directly by the heartbeat. So the, the arteries, the blood's going out to the extremities. Uh, the, the veins blood is coming back. And, yeah. and so it's kind of like a, that's a closed system, but outside that is other fluids. And, you know, and we, we called it the interstitial space, but it's kind of like, here's a cell and then there's fluid here. And now here's a, here's a, a capillary going next to it, providing some nutrients, but then there's this liquid that's around it. Well, that liquid goes, you know, into the lymphatic system and, and it requires physical movement, you know, for it to work, it will pool. And if you, like, if you're sitting all day, our legs have a tendency to swell. And part of that reason is because we're kind of cutting off part of that drainage system. We're bending it and it, and the stuff just can't get through. Part of it could be veins, you know? Yes. But, but part of it is a lymphatic system could be pinched and, and, and not allowing the system to go through the body. And, um, it's, uh, and so that's where the massage comes in. And matter of fact, some people, when they've, uh, especially uh, women, some women, when they've had breast cancer, they remove the lymph nodes. And so now they're going to have lymph, lymph, uh, lymphedema, uh, swelling in the, because of that, because the system isn't draining right. So they have to, you know, push that fluid out and do massage to get that out. Um, and if they're sitting down like this all day, 
you know, it's going to, you know, their arms are going to swell more. And actually, typically, it's like, you know, even if they had a, a double mastectomy and lymph nodes removed, for some reason, one side may be worse than another, you know, or, you know, uh, for a person like you, you know, one leg may be a little worse than another, but that some of that swelling is some of that sign. Some of that, but it's not always just the lymphatic system. Sometimes the veins can become leaky and have holes in them. And the serum can seep out through that. Interesting. And so I see that a lot. So swelling in the ankles is not always a lymph edema issue, but it could be a leaky vein issue. And so we use um, a, a chemical called hesperidin uh, that actually strengthens those blood vessels so they're not leaky and uh, is part of that uh, edema issue. Edema is a more of a general term than there's lymphedema. There's venous edema um, and such. So that so that that's the purpose of that massage is to kind of move that system because it's just sitting there. If you're sitting there, it's just sitting there, and and a sauna is typically we're sitting. Yeah. So so by moving that, that's going to expose more uh, tissue and fluids to that heat. And cancer cells, you know, do spread a couple of different ways, and one of those is through the lymph nodes. That's why they always check check those lymph nodes, and you know, by you know moving that, the the goal in theory would be to you know expose those lymph areas to that heat. You know, if there is some cancer cells in those, and so that's actually just part of the way the body. That's where the body, the the lymph system, lymphocytes. That's a one of the white blood cells that gets yeah. rid of stuff. So I mean, so they're kind of like concentrated in that lymph system. They help get rid of of cancer cells. So we want to kind of mobilize that and move that. So that's the benefit. You know, I mean, so we know science says that exercise reduces the risk of cancer and enhances chemotherapy treatments and radiation treatments too. Yeah. Now we're, you know, we're we're needing more information about sauna. I think we'll see similar type things, but the lymph edema and, and massaging that is you know uh, very important. Some people uh, it might even by uh, get a similar effect by doing dry brushing, you know, yeah. and a dry brush and, yeah. and hard enough to you know scrape the skin. And uh, you know, in some cultures, uh, you know, they're 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 slapping themselves. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that's a, that, you'll see that a lot with um, if you see any type of lift note massages. Um, online, you'll see videos where people are just tapping. They tap mm -hmm. because they're they're really really close to the surface of your skin mm -hmm. and where right. they're located. And they're located in bunches, right? So a lot of people, when I when I tell people I got twenty three removed, people are like twenty three removed. I mean, you got hundreds throughout your body. Yes, and and right. so twenty three is a is a substantial number. And and why we agree to doing that? It was less this less eliminate any chance of of its being in any of those and spreading because through um your ct scans you might not see it and mm -hmm. and 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 it was actually when they did remove the 23 one of them already had a little marker on it so mm -hmm. it was starting to spread and i mean we could talk about that for another day but i mean I, I i'm a strong believer in the reason it started to spread is from the time they did my um uh diagnosis and when they found it and they did the bio the the from there by them touching it that my mindset is now we had almost a three month period before surgery. So we had three months for that cancer to be like, Hey, you're touching me now. I, I, you, I, you open up that shell. I'm going to start going wild. That's why it spread. So, um, but it did go right to my lift notes. And that was where it was, it was another three, four months. Would it have started spreading? Would it take longer? But it was already starting to get in those areas. So that is one thing we want to make sure our, our lymphatic system is functioning at all times. And as part of the, as part of the sauna, part of the exercise, part of the whole routine, but I, I strongly recommend to anybody that is going through cancer, wants to prevent cancer or anything like that. It takes you two, three minutes a day. It takes you two, three right. minutes a day. You don't have to do it in a sauna. You could do it in the morning. You could do it at night. You could do it. You're watching TV. It literally, you could do it anywhere and you could do it. You don't need any special tools. If you want to buy it, there's lymphatic little they look like a like a half a spoon and they're made out of wood and they're actually really comfortable and they cost about 10 bucks on Amazon. And uh, and those I've been using a tool. I find it a little bit more effective because it kind of gets you really in there. But um, it's 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 something that I think anybody should incorporate into their daily routine. It doesn't matter who you are. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, and I agree with that. And uh, but then also a person that does have edema, swelling, you know, you know, we need uh, there is an advantage for that person, especially. Yeah, you know, I feel like that they're going to have a maybe even a, a greater concern. They're going to have more pooling, and the it, skin's going to be thicker and fluids, and it's just going to be more difficult for those uh, infrared to to penetrate some of those areas if if there's a lot of edema in the uh, the lower legs and ankles, for example. Yeah, this has been. We're we're going to forty five minutes. I always try to keep them short so we keep people's yeah, interest flowing. So it goes by so fast. Let's just quickly go over. The benefits of a sauna quickly. Um, you got your uh, heat shock therapy. I mean, heat shock proteins, which are going to be released. Uh, it's going to increase your white blood cells. It's mm -hmm. going to increase your blood flow. It's going to increase the stimulation of your lymphatic system. We said, mm -hmm. and then once you increase the uh, in, incorporate the lymphatic massages, we're really getting a ton of benefit out of this. Yes. So let's okay. let's just finish off give me give me your overall feeling your and your recommendations for asana and uh for our audience so i it's a core part of my recommendations yeah. you know a person has cancer and so i send out a, an outline list and so here's things that we can talk about and and it's very important and the cost can be minimal you know there you know uh you don't have to go to a gym you could matter of fact i have some clients that have a gym membership already they haven't been using it yeah. <laughs> you know, so they can go. So it's easy. Yeah. Um, you know, infrared is going to be better. It penetrates better. Uh -huh. And, but it's something that you can do, you know, at home, it's easy. There's, you know, no excuse. You don't have to worry about like weather here is terrible today. We got our first snow. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, so people don't want to go out so we can do it at home. And, um, and, and then it, it helps chemotherapy and radiation, you know, treatments. So, Can I ask you a quick question? Have you ever sure. looked into this? And this is something that um, when I did buy my home sauna, I looked at the radiation levels of infrared sauna mm -hmm. compared to um, a, a basic, what you go to a, a, like a rec center is more of a, a heat system. It's not an infrared system. So right. have you ever looked at the radiation aspect of it? Yeah, I have not. Yeah, I have okay. you. I, I mean, one thing is uh, I know that you are, when you're looking at numbers, you want to keep it under four. And the one I bought was at a two. So it was okay. a very low, but that's something you have to look at is the brand of sauna. If you are going to purchase one at home, yes. that's if it's infrared, really uh, it's something we can, maybe you could probably research a bit and maybe we could put it in our show notes is uh, infrared is um, the uh, radiational levels of that. We have to be very careful with that too, especially if, if you had radiation in the past, through right. cancer, um, you don't want to keep exposing yourself to over radiation. So you want to make sure you buy a system that's keeps it at a certain control level. If that makes any sense. Yes, definitely. Yes, I will. We will. Get, I'll get more information to that. You know, and then the um, um, we want to do it a minimum of three days a week, yeah. minimum. Yeah. And uh, once uh, in the Finnish study on general health and prevention of cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's and things like that you know, once a week did not have an impact. No, no. Okay. So, you know, when they found the, the impact started when they were doing it, you know, like four days a week. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have to have enough of it. And so, um, it's, it's easy to do, but we have to be sure and hydrate and get our minerals and then do a cold shower, rinse that crud off of our skin and to help detox and ideally a cold shower not a hot shower a hot shower is going to dilate the blood vessels and we may reabsorb those toxins the cold shower the benefit is that that's going to further to open up the blood vessel so there's two main things i think of it it's going to be uh it's going to be the heat shock protein and blood supply so cancer thrives in low oxygen poor blood supply and it has a tendency to ferment in that situation, along with sugars. Yeah. Um, and so if we can increase blood supply and uh, their the circulation and, and hit it with a heat treatment and or exercise, that is what we're going for. That, that it's, is it's, really it's, the, it's the whole it's a whole holistic approach. I mean, yes. I mean, one thing we talk about on a regular basis and I've talked to you about is you want to, especially if you're ever diagnosed or you're looking at prevention, you have a family history, you want to give your opportunity for your body to be working at the best possible optimization. So working out, saunas, 
vitamins, your diet. There's, it's not just one thing is going to prevent or get rid of the right. cancer or, 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 or help fight it off. It's a whole holistic approach. You need to be doing everything. And yeah, sorry, there's study, yeah, yeah, there's, there's studies about that. Like on the heat shock, even foods can impact that supplement yeah. can impact it. Yeah. Yeah, exercise impacts it. Sauna impacts it. So it's like, and there's many things to this and this a, a, kind of like a new interest. I mean, we've known about heat shock proteins actually since uh, 2002 or so when the yeah. article really started coming out. Uh, but in the past 20 years, but the interest is like really growing now and like, okay, well, what else impacts that? Yeah. And, and so there, you know, so yes, there's many things, even, even some supplements, you know, and eating right. The things that all the things we typically say, everything has a benefit. The yeah. more things we do, the better the results. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. And, uh, going to finish off with the sauna, I mean, like I said, when it comes to if your time is limited, um, what your resources are limited, if you do have access to a sauna, make this one of your choices because yes. the benefits, cardiovascular cell, like there's so many benefits to it. And it's something where you could just jump in and out. You're not, it's, it's not a lot of work on your part. Mm, and no. it, and there's so many benefits to it. And it's something that anybody could do. Like I said, my, starting this podcast, my, both my kids and my wife, we all, we all sauna now. And it's, uh, my kids love it. My, my son, we do it every night together. And it's just, it's something that, um, really, really helps. Ben. And it's, it, it's time for yourself. You can work on your breathing techniques. You can work on massaging your lift, lift necrotic system, your uh, lift notes, or you could also just read a book in there. Right. Listen, listen yeah. to a podcast. And, and then there, the social aspect is important. Yeah. You know, and how many times do we not sit or how many times do we, or do we not sit and talk to somebody without our phone? You know, and yeah. and have that conversation, and then connect with a with a, a loved one, a family member. Yeah, yeah, it's so yeah. important. So yeah. that's another Finnish, you know, and 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 Scandinavian thing. Is I mean, it's a social thing. It's a family. Yeah, thing. yeah it is. It is. It is. It is. Children, 100%. you know, children always are included yeah. in that. Yeah, this has been awesome. I appreciate you, Keith. And uh, once again, Prevail Over Cancer uh, podcast, another hit. So I appreciate. It. I'm sure our audience can get a ton of it. Thank you so much, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for setting this up and, and your, your team, too. It's great. Thank you, buddy.